when we're talking about, you know, keeping something, because we all should strive to keep it. And we hear stories from the Old Testament, even to the New Testament, when the Lord talked about, you know, keeping what God has gave us. If we hear the scriptures that we know all the time that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, who is he stealing? He already got the world. He's talking about saints. Talking about believers. He's taking what God has given us and making us go back, like the Bible says in Proverbs, like a dog returning back to his vomit. And he's lapping it back up. So we really want to get into it. And I start thinking about it. And I start thinking about David. And David's not only his struggles, but the challenge challenges that young David had. As a, as a young man, David was, the Bible says, a man after God's heart, but he struggled. I truly believe David struggled all the way up to his life. And, and a lot of times we think about it, we don't realize, you know, how David came to be and, and, and how God called people who have struggles. And how God called people have things that he already know about that we have. God is not looking for silver vessels. He's not looking for golden vessels. But what he's looking for is yielded vessels. That, that people will yield their lives unto him. And I started to think about as David was a sheep protector. David became... Second to the king, Saul. I thought about even with David, King Saul was tormented by spirits. David with his harp and the string instruments. When he was a, 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 a teenager, played the string instruments to drive the spirits out of King Saul. Tormented spirits. There's all kind of spirits that's in people. Even some was in us and try to return back to us. And a lot of times people say, hold on, how can they return? Well, they return because we're undisciplined. We may get lazy. We may get sidebarred or sidetracked. And I found out that if we don't stay to the task, the scripture that we know so about he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. And that's why when you see when David was coming up, the Lord was still saying, David is a man after God's own heart. Even all that we know about David. You read the book of Psalms, David was a crying out man, a praying man, a singing songs to the Lord. He fought all the way to the end. And a lot of times we don't realize we're not talking about fighting flesh and blood. We're talking about fighting principalities. We're talking about fighting rulers of darkness, trying to remind us who we once was of the past. And I found out that's the reason why the Word of God says we have to have a renewed mind, not just one time, but all the time. And I understand why people fall back. I really do. I understand why people not only just fall back, but they go back and act back to what they used to be. And, and God is calling us, guys. He's calling us to a place of what? Freedom. Amen. He's calling us to a place of freedom. If you got your Bibles, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 19. Amen. If you got your Bible, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 19. Amen. And we're going to start in verse 9. 1 Samuel 19 and 9. Amen. So, so a lot of times we don't realize. Remember what I said. He says in Psalms chapter 19, 
verse 9. Samuel, I'm sorry, Psalm. Samuel chapter 19, I'm sorry, verse 9. He says, now the distressing spirit. How many times sometimes we feel distressed by bills? We stress about what we're going to eat. We stress about our marriages. We stress about our kids. But the enemy can put a distressing spirit. If a distressing spirit jumps on you or jumps on me, then what are you doing to get the, the, that spirit off of you? What are we doing to get that spirit off of us? Is that why so many people have uh, what they have, uh, uh, they have uh, blow-ups, we call them, or they have, uh, uh, they have anger issues, or they have stress issues. But the Bible says that was a distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. Look at that. He said, a distressing spirit comes up because God sent the, allowed the distressing spirit to come up on Saul because Saul was what? Disobedient. A lot of times we say, why, why would the Lord allow that spirit to come on me? He says, the Lord, came, the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spirit in his hand. And David was playing music with his hand. Then Saul Verse 10, sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away because he wanted to kill him. Because you remember, there's a stress and spirit of competition in the kingdom of King Saul. And, and the people says, David, um, King Saul killed a thousand men, but David killed 10,000 men. <laughs> and, and that's a spirit of, man, he's going to take over. Same thing with King Herod came out when they said the one is coming and was born was Jesus. And we know a distressing spirit came upon him where he says, I'm going to kill every child up to what? Two to three years of age. One to two years. So the baby won't come. What, what is the enemy doing? He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy the promise. See, a lot of times we say, you know what? Why do spirits come on people? It's two. Spirits come on people because of disobedience. Don't, don't know how to understand how to keep their deliverance. To keep a deliverance, I know one thing I must do, I must stay close to Jesus. Not only staying close to Jesus, I may stay close to his people. The, the third thing I must do, I, may, I must uh, read and worship and pray and do the things I know to do. But if I find my, myself getting a spirit on me, then I must seek out the not only help, but prayer unto the Lord to relieve me from this what? Spirit. Amen. So many people don't realize that I truly believe now, and I said it a long time ago, that we were always content with spirits. And the reason why, because I remember the word of God says when Satan came to Jesus, he said he was coming back for another what? Appointed time to do what? To tempt him. So don't tell me you only got tempted once when you first got saved. We get tempted all the time. Things come to our mind. Things come to our, our eyesight. Satan's still doing the same tricks he did back in the garden. The lust of the eyes. The pride of life. The cares of this world. He said these things choke the word of God up out of us. Why do you think he wants to put a spirit on you? And then some spirits are on us that we inherited from our parents or our forefathers, the, the ones that came down. And we have to do something to break those cycles, those patterns. You know, the Lord told me, he says, hey, you want the house to get cleaned up? You clean it up. He always telling me that. I'm like, won't Danielle clean it up? And these kids. He said, you be the example to clean it up. If you want to break something, you got to show other people how things must be what? Broken. See, I can easily say, do this, do that, but what am I doing? That's the reason why the word of God said, faith without works is what? Dead. So, so we have to work what God is putting us to work it. And I said, man, for the past couple of days, I said, no, we will have a, a, a cleaned up house. 
And the reason why I'm using house is because I'm also using reference of your spiritual house. Your house that the Spirit of God is supposed to what? Live in. You can't allow a spirit of anger. You can't allow the spirit of the world or the spirit of the past jump back upon you. Because if you do, what will happen to you will be something so dangerous what Saul did. Saul says he pressed and drove a spear into the wall. So da David fled and escaped that night. He wanted to kill David. And the Bible says many times David really could have did what? Kill Saul. But he chose not to kill Saul because he was honoring the what? The king authority. He could have easily killed Saul multiple times. But he didn't. He honored the office. He recognized that God still called him to, to for that office. And David, we see David in that light. We also see David in that light when the king Saul said, I'm going to give you uh, many wives. And then David began to have many wives. As we see David trapped alone, that's the reason why when we see in Psalm 51, when David found himself with Bathsheba. Struggles. David married Bathsheba, then have kids by Bathsheba. One kid that the Lord said, this child won't make it, even though David fasted and cried out to the Lord. Because the Bible says that David, he said, I would give you any other woman except this woman. She's a married woman. So David was caught in the, the affair of what? Adulterous. People don't realize that adultery is real and it's serious, even in marriages. Your old high school girlfriend from high school can pop up on Facebook or DM you or a dude can DM you and start bringing up the past, what y'all used to do. It happens, people. And because the enemy been bringing records in your house where you ain't been getting attention or love, guess what? That spirit jumps on who? You. And then now you ain't really digging your spouse you with no more. A spirit has come in. A different spirit has come in. Say, he ain't that like he used to. She ain't that like she used to be. It happens to anybody. Who, who get unfocused, who get un, uh, 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 prepared what the battle is all about. That's just why they say this is, you know, being a believer, it, it's not just a race, it is a marathon. Oh, come on, <laughs> Sometimes you do fall into it, but the, the Bible says that's the reason why the good man falls seven times and he does what? Get back up. We got to get back up. We got to get back up, people of God. And I'm telling you the reason why I'm saying this because, see, the word of God also says what David did. And we'll go to Psalms 34 for that one. Amen. And, and, and the reason why uh, I started thinking about David this morning and I said, man, David went through a lot of ups and downs in his relationship with the Lord. Amen. And, and, and most of them, guys, was all about what? What his parents' parents got himself in, got himself involved with. Amen. He he experienced. Remember what I was talking about. He he dealt with their type of what sins. See, sins carry spirits. Amen. Just like we talked about, there's alcoholic spirits. There's spirit of lies. The spirits of rebellious. The spirits of boasting. Amen. But but watch what he says. He says, David was says all time, not sometimes in Psalms 34 and 1. He says, I will bless the Lord at what? See, David said, no matter what I find myself involved with, I'm still going to bless the Lord. That's why God told David was a David, a man out the God's own heart. David found himself in some mess and he still going to say, I'm going to bless the Lord at what? <laughs> His praise should continue to be in my mouth. He said, my soul should make a boast in the Lord. The humble should hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He says, I sought the Lord 
and he heard me and delivered me from all my what? Fear. The fear is just going back. That's the reason why the Bible says we don't fear. And I'm going to read that in a minute. I was telling a young lady at my, my job, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, go to Romans chapter 8 real quick. Y'all going to love this. We don't fear to go back into what? Bondage. And the enemy, that's what he, that's all the tricks and traps he get us to fear of what? Going back. We don't fear. We don't fear. Amen. In, in Romans chapter 8, in verse 14, go ahead and read that for me, Minister Iris. Are led by the Spirit of God, uh -huh. they are the sons of God. Keep going, please. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received... Stop. He said, we have not received the spirit. That bondage means slavery. You know what Demas wants to do is put us back in slavery of the things that we couldn't get, we couldn't get free from. That, that's, the, that's the thing that the enemy, whether it's sickness, I heard a woman talking about, I was, somebody sent me that, I think my sister sent me that on TikTok. Well, she got free from cancer uh, uh, probably two or three years ago, and then two or three years, the cancer come back. And it took her life. She wrote a song before she died. And I'm saying, hold up. How's that spirit come back? It comes back easily. Because watch this, if you are letting your guards down, things can come back on you. That's why, you remember when Jesus, see when Jesus delivered people, guys, he also gave them instructions how to keep their what? Deliverance. When he healed people, he also told people, told people how to keep their what? Healing. You have to keep it. You have to fight for it. Keep fighting for it. Because the enemy tried to put it back on you. And you say, what do you mean? Well, when Jesus healed people, what did he do? He says, after he healed them, he says, go and sin no more. Let something worse come upon you. He's telling you. Anytime, anytime the, he healed people, he said, go and then show yourself to the priest. I show, I give an offering what God has done for you. He always giving them instruction. He just, okay, you're free. No, he says, okay, this is how you keep your freedom. This is how you keep from the enemy coming back. And, I, and that's why many people come in here and many people go out and many people get healed. But then it, the sickness, what, comes back. You know, I told one person, I said, I can't fall myself back out there in the flesh like that. In, in the name of, uh, I, I'm afraid it'll come back. Now, that's a, that's a different type of fear. As a fear of the Lord, allowing it, just like we read in Samuel, he says, I will put a distressing spirit on you for rebelling. And a lot of us don't realize it ain't. It's, the Lord says, I allow that spirit to have his way because you out of my what? Will. Amen. So when he began to say this, guys, he says, he says, for the spirit. Oh, well, he said, for, hold on, 15. Finish that, please. I'm sorry. For you have not of bondage again to fear. Uh-huh. But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We cry out, Abba, Father, Father! Yes, I don't want to do this. And this spirit keep harassing me. Father, I don't want to slap him or slap her. Father, I don't want to go out and cheat on my wife. Father, I don't want to go and steal no more. Father, I don't want to go and drink and get turned up. So you got to cry out. Remember what I said, what David said? He said, I will bless the Lord at what? All times. Yes. That's the reason why when we've seen this, guys, we've seen an understanding or patterns. That's patterns of this. And that's the reason why he says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. You got to know who you are Amen. and whose you are. And then he says, for the spirit which you have received is not a spirit of bondage or slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. You know how many people say, man, I fear this thing will come back upon me. 
And it does because they open their mouth and give they the word curses. I feel I'm going to find myself to go back out there and begin to back drinking or whatever. Or I fear that I might kill somebody. Think about the people that murder somebody that's out. And they got a hot button that Satan knows if I can get there and touch that button. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Some people you don't want to mess with. Amen. Amen. And the reason why the spirit can easily jump, if it can easily jump on Cain, how much more? The spirit of murder jumped on Cain. That's what the Lord told me. But watch out, playing with people. Some people you can't just play like that. You'll be on the other side. What happened? <laughs> Amen. What? What, what's going on? What, 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 what? Is this my demise? Amen. That's why I tell people, you don't want to mess with a jealous man or jealous woman. Women killing people just like men killing people. I, I seen it when I went to the women prison. I said, what you in here for? She said, murder. Murder her husband. I said, Jesus. This stuff is real, people of God. But the Bible says, he says, we don't fear. Again, into what? Bondage. Amen? I, I, I'm not, I'm not finding myself afraid to go back into what? Bondage. What we are cry about? What? Abba, Father. Keep reading, please. Verse 16. What version are you reading? I'm out of Amplify, but I'm, I'm, I can pop back to the King James. <laughs> the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Yes. That we are the children of God. Yes. Then Look at that. He says, the spirit himself bear witness with our spirits that we are children of God. That's how you know you still with, rocking with God. When the last time the spirit bear witness with your spirit? Think about it. You know, some people are like, what does that feel like? I don't know if he ever bear. See, the spirit must bear witness. See, a lot of people don't fell off and them demons then got them back in bondage of slavery. Because the spirits have what? Come back in. And see, God is calling us that we get free from those spirits that are trying to what? Come back in. That's why the Lord says we all must fight, continue to fight to keep our what? Deliverance. We got to fight. We got to fight, people of God. Keep going, please. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. He says if we suffer, if we're going to suffer on this side of the plateau, we, go, we can't put, put our hands on people <laughs> like we used to. Amen. We can't just go run and, and DM somebody like we probably used to. I'm talking about the spirits. Amen. Because that's all it is, is a spirit. You, have, you think about it. You think David... Could David couldn't help himself, but the Holy Ghost can help him. When David cried out and kept crying out, the Spirit of God can help David, just like he can help us. That's the reason why when people try to fight and hold their own deliverance without the Lord, you're going to get, stay. that's the reason why church folk be lying to themselves. I'm free, and you know good and well you ain't free. Just look how you was cussing before you got in here. Look how you were so angry before you got in here. I was about to put that video on. You mad. You big mad. Because a lot of times, some of us, we mad over nothing. And if you, if you put your, take yourself away from it, you'll find out, God says, it's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Verse 18. Watch this. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Keep going, please. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. He says the earth is waiting for the true sons of God, but the, the earth can't receive the true sons of God if we in bondage. Amen. He says people are waiting for all of us. 
And you know, me and Mr. Murray was talking yesterday, and we just chopping it up. And and you know, we was talking about this church out here in Franklin who they they financial budget. I was just throwing out compassion for He went to a Friday meeting and he said, Man, if I I knew you was off, you could have came to a breakfast thing. And you know, these big old, big old, big old humongous churches look like a school. I showed Dale one time. We was out in Cool Spring, Franklin, where it was at. And and he, he says, Pastor Lou, what do you think this church financial budget a year? He says, what do you think that financial budget? You know, and I'm like, what, uh, 100000 200000 He said, nah. See how we think small? <laughs> because our fear. Fear stops us from moving what? Forward. You remember what the Lord, the Lord told me about fear? Fear is the opposite of what? Faith. If I'm afraid, I, fear makes me stand what? Still. This church budget is $30 million a year. Mr. Murray jumped out. Me, we can get it. We can get it. We should. And the reason why, the problem with bondage, even money and finances. Some of us in financial bondage of, because the enemy said, I'm going to keep you. He said, I'm going to keep you poor. I, you know, poverty is not of God. Amen. Amen? Poverty is not of God. But the enemy said, I keep you poor so you can't influence nobody. Why do you think when we watch celebrities or entertainers or sports people, the reason why we're watching them because they have something that we don't have. And what is that? What do they have? They have, uh, they not only have uh, stigma or keep on doing it to be successful, right? In that craft and they give. They also have what? Discipline. I told you guys, my son asked me about what, a week or two ago? He said, Dad, why you didn't play NFL? And I sit there and thought about what he was saying. And I said, I got distracted. And I almost a tear swallowed my eye because I allowed myself to get distracted. Females. In high school. And I started saying, you know what? If I wouldn't have got distracted, I'd probably been doing what I want to do. Because, yeah, he carried that football. Minister Merlin, no. I got a picture somewhere that I used to carry football too when I was his age. All the time. Because I was so disciplined at a young age that I ain't letting this football go. The teachers get mad at me because I'm bringing that football to school. They already knew. They, what you want to do when you grow up? Stop it. You already see this. Football. I want, I want to play football. I want to be a football player. But what the enemy does, he watches or he goes through your bloodline and see. What parent, 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 grandparent had hiccups or problems with? Or what demons had assigned to this parent and they failed? So he goes through the history of your bloodline all the way down on your mother's side and your father's side and see what they can get you in and put a spirit on you. And then I found out when God brought me back to my earthly father when I was 34. You know what he told me when I asked him? I said, man, I couldn't realize. Why was I such a, a womanizer at that time? And you know what he told me? Oh, my daddy was a womanizer. The apple don't fall too far from the what? From the tree. So now the enemy knew oh, I get them off of that football put the right person who got a spirit in them. It's the same way even with, uh, S S what's his name? Samson. The same way with Samson. God, S Satan knew that S God, you're going to use Samson to destroy the Philistine because they was worshiping false gods. He knew that the Lord wanted to use Samson to whoop him and destroy him. God never called Samson to sleep with the enemy. 
But the enemy, the enemy went down his what? Bloodline. And see what spirit that's in that bloodline. And whatever spirit is in that bloodline, if it's fear, if it's an adulteress, if it's homosexuality, if it's lesbian, if it's anger, guess what it does? It says now, let's test them. Try them. Because their great 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 uncle had that problem, or their great 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 granddad, or their great great grandmama, or their sister, or their auntie had that problem. <coughs> and surely we can get it on them. That's the reason why when you see, I'll never forget, I met one girl, she told me she's a fifth generation of prostitution. I said, What? This is all I know. Fifth generation? She said, my grandmama, my mama's grandmama, mama, grandma, prostitute. What do you, and, and when we think people can easily just what? Get free. No, deliverance is easy. But to keep it? To keep it? To keep it? It's easy to get saved. But to keep it? To stay saved? <laughs> Oh, y'all quiet on me. Amen. Y'all quiet on me. Amen. But watch this. He says, verse, uh, uh, he says, verse 19, he says, For the earnest expression of the creation, earnest wait for the revealing of the sons of God. For watch this. He says, For the creation was subject to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who's subject in hope. So God has given us hope. Verse 21, Iris, please. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. He says we're going to get free from this. That's the reason why I say when we get up out of here, we won't have, we won't have that issue no more. Because I started thinking about it. It's going to be people in heaven that's gorgeous. Think about David right now in heaven. Does he have a, a womanizing problem now? Because he says he's going to deliver them from that. Liberty means freedom, totally freedom from it. Think about the men and the women. Or think about God says, and such were some of you. There will be no homosexuals in heaven. Amen. Ain't going to be no drunkards in heaven. Amen. So that's the reason why when you know when I was I was thinking about this message, I was thinking about what I've heard for the past couple of days, and I'm thinking about prayer and I think about Lord, what what are you saying? And he says, Man, you have to tell your people, you know what? It's easy to get delivered, but to keep it. Because the spirit's coming back. But it's up for you to do when they come back. That's why the word of God says, if we resist him, if we resist him, he's gonna what? Flee. He resists them. We got to resist. But you know what I also found out, Minister Merlin, is that the Bible says meat belongs to those who are full of what? Age. Why do you think as baby Christians they keep on what? Falling, falling back to it. These are baby Christians having matured. Satan ain't after the mature ones. He after the what? The baby ones. Because they have mature. He said those who are full of age know how to discern what's good and what's evil. And they know how to possess their what? Bodies. And I start thinking about it. I said, possess it from what? S evil spirits coming back in. Amen. Because I told you, I, I was telling the guy, I said, man, I can't get myself back out there. I already know. And I ain't trying to be, you know, I know a lot of times I heard the prophet say, he said, you know what? Sometimes we do have to tell other people what God done brought us out to keep ourselves delivered. And I said, you know what? I, Sometimes I hate to tell it because it, it, it's not me no more, but I did catch two STDs. And, it, and I told him, I said, I don't want to go back out and mess with nobody. There's too much going on. That's the fear. But that's a right fear. Amen? 
It's too much going on. People said, man, the pastor just said he had two STDs. Well, yeah, that's before I came back. I was a pastor. Amen. That's, that's before I, I got to this place right here. But before I got to this place, God had to work a lot of stuff up out of me. Amen. Just like he had to work a lot of stuff out of who? You. Amen. He got, because before you get to this place, you can't, but it can't come back while you're in this place. Now, that's the reason why you see a lot of preachers. <laughs> ah, men and men talk about that. I stop here. How's these preachers falling back? Yeah, I ain't ready for this. Oh, I think I need, I need about 10 more people in here so they can get this. That's why I said we have to, we have to understand how the enemy plays. He'll use your child to make you do this so it can be a reaction. He says, watch this, when I was listening to that prophet James, prophet James Mawala, whatever his last name was, he was saying, he said, you know, Satan used the kids. He said, the Lord showed me how to free a person who had autism. I was telling Minister Merlin this. Because they tell you autism is not what? There's no cure for it. Is it autism? Autism is no freedom. He said, that's a lie by the devil. He said, the Lord told him he was preaching and he praying for one lady, son who had autism and nothing happens. And he said, he said I went back to my, uh, my prayer time and said, Lord, why did it? you didn't free him? He said, oh, you don't realize. He said, next person you pray over autism, you got to spend some time with them. He said, time? He said, yeah, you got to spend 32 days with that and pray every day. I told you, that's a, that's a fight. It's a fight in the spirit. And so we think, oh, just one time pray. No, he said 32 days. So when he told the family, he says, I'm going to come and stay with you for 32 days. I said, what? He said, I left my church. I got off the, po the podium. I got to preach. I let the other uh, ministers. I said, y'all take this. I'm going to be with this family for 32 days. Well, the wife says, uh -uh, and the husband was a drunk. Didn't want to come home. And he's tired because the kid was acting up, lying, hollering, you know, yelling and screaming, whatever. And he says, man, each that first night was something interesting. Even the mama didn't come home. They, they left me in there with their child for 30 two days and he says I prayed and I spoke prayed in tongues I did what I thought I knew and then guess what happened he says the third the last day a demon came up a principality a dark spirit because it was it was getting weaker and weaker be steadfast of praying for 32 days and he said once he seen that spirit like a dark shadow figure came in the house and said, what are you doing? Let this boy, let me have this boy. And he said, you come out of this boy, leave this boy alone. And that spirit left the boy and that boy is now talking. Amen. That boy is now playing music. That boy is now striving. But look what it took, 32 days. And I said, my God. And I know when you're over in Ghana, they can do that when you're on full time. But I'm like, how can one of us do something like that? That's why I say, Lord, we got to free up our resources so we can do that. I was telling Miss Merle. I said, Miss Merle, she was like, she said, man, I talked to uh, Pastor Kumar, and uh, uh, he tried to reach out. And I said, yeah, he wants you to come down there. It was funny. I said, go on down there. God. She said, uh-uh. And I said, you said the Lord want to use you. Get your, get your pot, uh, what's that, passport. I said, she said, well, hey, it costs about 100 something. I said, easy. If, if, the, if the church in Franklin Resources, $30 million. <laughs> yeah, she said, me and Iris will go. I said, I, I probably won't go because she's still on that job. I said, well, you've got to get profit. <laughs> Your profit to go. Uh, we, we get them passports and go preach down in India because we have to really, you know what? Only, only people that stopping us is ourselves. Fear. How do we do it? If that church has a budget of $30 million, and I started telling Pastor Ferdinand, I said, man, can we not talk to them by helping us budget-wise, money-wise? Because the Bible says in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says those who are wealthy show the other small ones. Teach them. And it's a humongous church. I know what the church he's talking about. It's really big. It's like a campus. 
I said, 30 million, what they need that for? He said, they do a lot of giving to overseas and stuff. I'm like, who? Give it NC. We here. I said, you should have been in that meeting talking about, hey, I'm a little smart. I've written out this place. It's sick. They can even pay your monthly bill. Put it in their budget. I said, they ain't Pastor Fellow. We need to be wise. Pastor Fellow's raised 10, got 10, got one of them to write a check for $10,000 for a church over in Ghana to start a building. Because it's cheap over there. And the man wrote it just like it nothing. I told Pastor Fellow, we, we, we have to, man. We got to ask. Hey, we got something going on, too. Y'all don't, I don't know if y'all don't know this, but I'm renting out this little dentist back at the dentist's office. And uh, I, I need a building, a place where I can put the kids and, and grow my ministry. Can y'all not help? Amen? I'm telling you, people of God, we, we, we're going to have to get there. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if we don't, what happens is we'll miss it. Well, God is calling us to be great in. Amen. So, so watch this. Let me, let me go. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm oh boy, I'm telling you. Let me go to Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to get back to uh, uh, Psalms 34 in a minute. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. He, Jesus was talking to the, the Pharisees at the time. Watch this. And, and the Pharisees seen Jesus cast out what? Devils. We'll start in verse 24. Amen. We'll start in 23. Go ahead. No, we'll, we'll start in 22. Go ahead, Minister Iris. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. The blind and dumb both spake and saw. Keep going, please. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Question. Keep going. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by the other book, the A devil. Of the devil. Now watch what Jesus said. He says, And Jesus knew their thoughts. Stop. How did he know their thoughts? The yeah. Remember I told you when in, in heaven, you know what a person thinking? I was amazed when that angel told that angel told me to turn that mud sticks into a krill or krill, and I thought that's impossible up there. I said, that ain't, that ain't no way. He told me to speak to it and tell it, and I didn't say it with my mouth. That's when I know they can read your what? Thoughts. See, you remember when Jesus said, when the kingdom of heaven, when you preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that... The thing that goes on in heaven, you'll hear, hear, you have here on earth. That's, that's, that's what he was operating in. He perceived their what? What they was thinking of. Amen. See that? So keep going, please. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. He says, watch this. Every kingdom comes against itself. That's the reason why they say if you fight, two people fighting in the house, the house ain't going to what? Stand. If, if, I'm, if I'm fighting Danielle and we fight knives and, and, and throwing rocks and sticks and everything, somebody, this, this house ain't going to stand. We're not going to stand together. That means the demons came up and made us get so angry and mad at one another. And now the really, she going to go to prison for killing me or I'm going to go to prison for killing her. And... And the kids go be off to the state and or with their grandparents and it's over. That there, there will be no more me going back on Thompson Lane. There will be no more her going back on Thompson Lane. Because one of us gonna be in a prison or the other one's gonna be what? Dead. Meaning because now the house can't what stand. Who gonna pay the bills? They can't pay no bills. So the house can't stand no more. So that house is now being what brought down to what? Nothing. So the demons, he says, hold on, y'all, y'all, y'all not understanding. If I was cast in the spirit out by Beelzebub, Beelzebub ain't fighting against his what? Self. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say something, but I, I save it for another time. <laughs> Lord just gave me something. Amen. Go, go ahead, please, please. 
<clears throat> every kingdom divided against itself uh -huh. shall not to desolation. Uh -huh. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Keep going, please. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. And how shall then his kingdom stand? And and if I by the Azelbug cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Keep going. Therefore they shall be your judges. And but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, surely then the kingdom of God it is come unto you. Keep going. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? Why? Spoil his good. Uh huh. Except he is first bind the strong man, yes. and then he will spoil his house. And he <clears throat> that is not with me is against me. And and he that gathereth not with me scatters abroad. Scatters abroad. So so you he's trying to let you know. He said if <laughs> how? He said it takes a stronger man. He said I'm the stronger man to plunder. These demons offer you, offer me. And that's the reason why he says, he who is not with me is against me, and who does not gather with me scatters abroad. And what he mean by that? He says, those who, he says, I told all you come unto me, those who are weary and what? Heavy laden. And he said, I will give you what? Rest for your what? Soul. He said, I give you rest for it. Look at this, people of God. Keep going, please. Not with me is against me, and he that not gathereth with me scattereth abroad. And wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto him. But he says, You keep talking about I'm casting demons out by devils, that's the spirit of blaspheming. And blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. That's the spirit talking about the Holy Ghost is connected with devils. That's like a person talking about Satan and Jesus as brothers. Mm. How foul devil. That's blaspheming. Amen. <clears throat> oh, you're talking about the two are good. I heard one person talking on TikTok. It ain't just Jesus say, ain't they both brothers? It's just the two are good evil. Because why Jesus want us to serve him and Jesus in a tell her we can't have fun. I said, what? It's, it's impossible. You got it messed up. I got a fin. That's blaspheming. Talking about the two of good evils. One good. We talk about that right now with politics. Ain't number two of good evil. Both of them evil. Come on now. Keep going. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man. You say you can talk about me. Keep going. It shall not be forgiven him. It, it will be forgiven him. But whomever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be See, and he says, how you speak against the Holy Ghost? Talk about what we doing is of the devil. Talk about what the enemy is doing through him or her or whoever. That's why I don't put my hands on people I see manifestation work. Whatever they're doing privately, let the Lord deal with that. That's why the Bible says, touch not my, what, anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Amen? But I got to see some anointing, because anointing ain't just a talk. It sounds good. No, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's actually how you manifest. Amen? Amen? Now watch what he says. Keep going. Whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Keep going. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. Keep going. For the tree is known by his fruit. He said, you know by the fruits you bear. That's when people start saying you got a judging spirit, a judgmental spirit. Where are you getting at? The Bible says we know people by fruits they bear. He said, either you. Now, why does he say either you? Because you and I have rights to let things in or dispel things out. Remember I talked about deliverance. Deliverance is something that either I make good, or I can make it bad by my own decisions and how I'm walking and who I'm association with. That's why I tell people now, I, I don't deal with people like that got the same issues that I had. Why is that? Why is that? Why I don't, I don't deal with the same people who got strong spirits when it used to be in me? Because they in them now trying to get me back. 
So I ain't finna hang out with you whether you male or female. I never forget the Lord told me one time, he says, don't go. He says, don't go with them. He says, don't go. He said, you know, he told me one time when I was going to TSU. I'm not TSU. He told me we was going to Atlanta that time. He says, don't go out of town with them. This was my old friends. And I've been saved probably about four years. And I'm thinking, I'm good. God, I know I can do. I can handle it. And some of y'all heard that testimony. I couldn't because immediately I know these guys. I used to be just like them. And the first thing they did before we even touched down out of Nashville, what did they do? Because he had a Denali and he put uh, uh, he put on porn. And he got films right here, right there, right there. And all four of us in there and his films up front. And I'm like, this is why God told me don't get in this car with them. See, I had to learn from my what? Mistakes. Because now I'm allowing the spirit to enter back what? In. That's why he says either you make the tree good or you make the tree bad. See, it's up to us. It ain't the devil is walking around doing. It's my decisions what I'm doing. That's why the Bible says don't put no confidence in your what? Flesh. The flesh is weak. Your flesh, like my flesh, it's like kryptonite to Superman. We get weak. Amen. So he's saying, watch this, people of God, in that scripture, he said, he says, verse 33, either make the tree good and its fruit's good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. Me, he says, don't, you can't be both. You can't be one, today I'm good, today I'm bad, today I'm good. That's like you schizophrenic. You go to the hospital. You remember the Lord told me, I'm in, a, I'm in an emergency room and looking around and people coming to submit. What's going on with you? The nurse asking, what's going on? How can we help? Well, I got this pain. What if I go there and say, they said, what's wrong with you? I ain't nothing. I just want to come up here and look at the ceiling and the tiles. <laughs> they said, oh, we know what's wrong with <laughs> you. You crazy. You got a crazy spirit. We got another hospital you need to go to. And I know people always say, the, the, the church is a hospital. It's not the church. If the church is a hospital, then when you go get well? Because people don't stay in the hospital forever. They get well. They leave the hospital. And then some people don't leave because they get killed or die. That's why I said when I go to the hospital, I don't like to go to the hospital because there's too many what, spirits in there. Amen. And I don't need no spirit of aches and pain jump on my bones. Amen. That's why I got to go up and out covered in the blood. Covered in prayer. I'm telling you people, God, God show me. He said, this is how the enemy is plundering us. Because we, 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 we church folks sometimes get ignorant. Amen. Ignorant. Ignorant. Okay, we church folk get ignorant. And, and the reason why we get ignorant, because we don't understand. <laughs> we don't understand quite, quite well. Amen? So he says, watch this. He called them, he called these religious people, you brood of what? Vipers. Brood of vipers. Thank you. You brood of vipers. He says, how can you being evil speak good things? He, he, what he was saying, you guys are are ministers. You got a priest, whatever you want to call You guys are ministers and preachers and how can you speak good and also do evil? Because privately, openly they speak what? Good in front of people, but privately Satan got a hold on them. <laughs> oh, Lord help us, help us, Lord help us, help us, Lord help us, help us, Lord help us. Mm -mm. Help us, Lord, help us. How can you be an evil speak good things? For he says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will do what? Speak. You remember when the Lord told me to go, don't take that trip with them to Atlanta to go watch a football game. They use football, what I used to what? Love to get me in that car. 
<laughs> Satan will use anything that you love to get you in. Once he got me in, I started to watch it because I was a single man at that time. And I started saying, my God, I ain't seen this in a long, my flesh got it. Father, I said, ooh, wee. I had three hours of watching. By the time, by the time I got to Atlanta, I was like, yeah, let's get them. I was ready. <laughs> See how my flesh in three hours got converted. The spirit, the spirit of perversion was ministering to me. And I started saying, I remember those times. I remember what I used to like. And it awoken something in me. But since I've been off the, 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 the field for about five years out in the world, I done forgot how to talk to girls. And they said, sit down, sit away, let us deal with it. And I just watched. I said, I'm ready. I'm ready like a lion, just waiting to pounce. I said, yeah, I get them when we go pounce. And they said, we got our boy back. What they saying is, we got the old Lou back. Because the, the spirit jumped back in him, got back in him. That's the reason why he says, yeah, Lou was preaching good before he left Nashville. But when he got to Atlanta, it was a totally different what? Story. See that, people? See how that works? So, what, so watch this. He says, he says verse, uh, where we at, Iris? Keep me. You just read 34. Yeah, 35? Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things. And? And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth He's, but remember he says, the bullet of the heart, the mouth will speak. Mm -hmm. Just like I, I never, I, I was dealing with this one minister and he was single looking for a wife. Man, man that girl, fine. We'd be up in church. He's saying this thing. He said, woo wee. Look, a sister such as, and that's, that dress on her, woo. I said, dude, what are you doing? That's lust. I just, I'm just a man, man, my goodness. I said, no, nah, bro, that's lust. And see, the bullet of the heart. See, you, you know, Satan taking notes. Say, oops. Say, say, take it. He, he know what he know is he know spirit used to, and he wants to get the spirit back in you, to hold you in what bondage. See, say no mind you come to church if you're still in bondage, because why right now you defile the church. Ah. You defile the church and then you spread that spirit all over what? The church. Because you got, everybody got spirits in them. Either you got a Holy Spirit, that's what you, we're all supposed to have, or you got an unclean or familiar spirit in you. You know, you know how it's, it's easy to, to, to have one night stands with people? You know how it's easy? Because they got the same spirit that's... It's in both of y'all. You can meet somebody at Kroger's and going down aisle 12 with a cereal and oatmeal at and, and you say, oh my God, you are beautiful. You too. Take my number. Of course. What you doing late on tonight? Nothing. Me neither. Can I holler? Yes, you can. And then boom, you're over the house or over somewhere and it pops up. You're like, how did that happen? It's a spirit. Remember we talked about David. Spirits of whoremongering. Spirits of adulteries. Spirits of lies. Spirits of deception. And the only reason why I'm talking about it is because I remember it was in me. Amen? And I'm telling you, Everybody can get free from things that once was in them, but he says, either you make the tree good. No, he says, either you make the tree good or you make the tree bad. It's the decision who you open yourself to, what spirits you open yourself to. Amen. That's why we, we see preachers up here and they got spirits of greedy, filthy lucre, loving money, because they used to love money out in the world. It just projects in the church. Now they're using their platform to get the, to fleece people for money. It's a, it's a spirit of filthy lucre. And then we're thinking, oh, God is using them. God is, no, you've been a fool. They bamboozling you. 
Because they lust, they love money more than anything. Same thing, preachers get caught up with women. Sleeping with, sleeping with all, some of all, most of all the women in the church. And we said, no, but Pastor Johnson, he's still a man of God. He, he weak like every man. No, hold up, wait a minute. Stop it. Pastor John's supposed to have some self-control. Pastor John's supposed to be the leader. That mean that the spirit that led him out of that mess supposed to help you to be. How is he leading us out of anything? Same thing with the church was in Chicago. It was known for the church of homosexuality. These people was married with women, but they also was down low. That's why I said spirits on people. Either the Holy Spirit or a familiar spirit or unclean spirit. Did you guys see that? Amen. Let me let me finish. Let me let me let me let me hurry up. I got I got too much to go on. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You help me, Holy Ghost. We give me about 15 minutes. Well, I'm trying to get out of about one, okay? So so watch this, people of God. Keep reading, please. But I say. But I say unto you. Uh-huh. Stop. You know, words are powerful. You know, I found out you can curse yourself by saying idle word. Well, you know, my mama was like that. My dad and my uncle then were like that. So, I, you know, I'm going to just be like, I'm, I'm, I ain't, I, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to keep it 100. What? I thought you were supposed to be like Christ. I thought you're supposed to be separating yourself from your natural bloodline, and now you got the seed of righteousness. You know, you can curse yourself by saying things like that. Idleness. He said, because every idle word will give an account on the day of what? Judgment. Look at this, people of God. Keep going. That every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Uh-huh. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. There you go. And by thy words thou shalt be so, so my own words, I'm condemning myself or I'm justifying myself. No, I'm, by, I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. No, I don't do those things no more. Amen. I never forget the enemy. When I got down, let me finish that Atlanta trip. When I got down, I, I, pr I got in the bathroom because I was getting scared again. Because they started talking about things I used to do. And then I got, I went to, I said, how can I use restroom? I, I, I went in the stall. I didn't have to do the number one or the two. I just sit in the stall and shut the door and got to praying. Remember, I called like David. I cried out. I, remember Psalm 34? I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, help me. I'm sorry. I should never came to this. I don't want to do what they talking about doing. And I, and, 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 I, and I left, I came out of the restroom like it nothing happened. I said, okay. They said, oh, yeah, we got connection. What we going to do? Uh, we, we ain't going to the game. I said, what? No, we ain't going to the game. We changed our mind. We're we going to go maybe to, uh, uh, what's that script bar down there, the popular script in the line? We, I, I can't think about it. See how the Lord renew your mind? Well, you don't remember. I, I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember the name. It, what's it called? Man. Look, you know it better than me. Hey, so, 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 and, and if they're going to meet us over there, we got drinks and, you know, they had bought drugs and all that. And I'm like, what? And I said, we ain't going to no football game. I said, dude, watch y'all get me down here. I didn't come down for that. But the enemy told, the Lord told me I should have known better to get in that car. I should have known better. So I was earnest. We went to Magic City, like Iris said. But guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Magic City was packed to capacity. The fact she said, can't nobody else get in here. Amen. Amen. Look what God was doing. God says, I raise up a standard. Yeah. He, he ain't going in there. You know, we drove around trying to get in 
place after place. Every place was packed. They getting frustrated. Now they calling the girls. Because now it's 1030, 1045. They calling the girls they met early that day. We're at the restaurant. And they said, hey, uh, nobody was picking their phone up. Look what God was doing. It was going straight to their voicemails. Look what God was doing. They, they, they were saying, why we, this, they said, every year we come down here, we conquer. They said, every time we come here, we conquer. But they forgot who they got with them. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, we rode around. Now it's 1130. Now it's 1230. Every place we were going to was overpacked, overbooked. They couldn't get the girls, so they said, let's go to another place. Too many girls. We find new girls. <laughs> they was determined. Let, it let me know demons are determined. They ain't giving up easy like Christians. We give up too easy. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we got to understand perseverance in the spirit realm. See, demons, demons, what they do, they search all through the night. Who they prowl on. Who spirits they can connect with. We don't search. We pray for five, ten minutes and think. And the spirit just go out. Just twinkling out. The Holy Ghost says, well, that ain't enough. Because we said, we tired. That, that five, ten minutes prayer, we, we out of breath. Because we ain't been exercising. We ain't exercising our lungs and our throat, Minister Merlin. We, uh, I'm about to say something else, but thank you, good Lord. That's, Lord, stop me. I'm about to say T.D. Jakes. But, but my kid says, stop saying that. Amen. <laughs> but what I'm saying guys is look what God was doing when I was in Atlanta he was stopping everything to the last point we went to we found a club called 112 and it was packed but this time they said oh we gonna wait it's 2, it's two o'clock in the morning what's going on I, 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 I'm not used to staying out like this late no more but I forgot who am I with people of darkness so now, the, the line is packed like, man, as people come out, they let people go in. So I'm in the car, the truck, rather, and I said, man, I ain't getting in the line. It's cold outside at 2 in the morning. Y'all call me on my phone when y'all get close to that line. I'm in the car, sleep like a mother. <laughs> Lord, no, what am I doing here? They determined. And then the tickets to get in the club at that night was like $30 to $40. Not even. I was like, my God, I didn't want to pay that. But they said, man, you going to get out. We getting in this club. And then we seen some dudes from Nashville. They said, what's up, Lou? What you, how y'all get Lou out? And I'm, I'm, I don't know. They kidnapped. No, they did. I, I willingly came. But <laughs> they said, how y'all get him out? Because we ain't seen him in a long time. And I was like, yeah, they got me out of here. So one dude said, hey, man, I want to go up in there. It's hot like hell in there. He said it's so hot that you can't enjoy. It's people pack sardines on one another tight. You can't dance. You can't talk. No, it's too hot. I said, man, you see the man says it's too hot. So let's just go back to our hotel. Let's go get something to eat and go back to our hotel. And just, we just lost tonight. Y'all take an L tonight. <laughs> let's get some food and go back to the hotel and sleep. You know what time we went and got something to eat? About 3, 34 in the morning. And then we got back to our hotel by 5, and they were still scratching their head trying to figure out, why did we not conquer? And then that's when the next morning we woke up and checked out. I, was, I had the courage and the gall to minister to all of them. I said, let me tell you why. Because I was with you. And I went in that bathroom and prayed against everything y'all was trying to do. Amen. And, 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 and God prevailed because I shouldn't be with you guys. And then the one brother started talking about the end time. And we got to conversating at breakfast. That like the IHOP or something or Shona's, whatever it was down there. But we got to conversating and talking about the word on a Sunday morning on our way home. And guess what? They didn't play no more what? Pornography in the truck going back. Because I spoke up. See, either you make the tree good or you make the tree what? Bad. <clears throat> Ain't no devil doing that. It's, I'm making that tree good or I'm, I can make that tree what? Bad. Amen? Amen. Where we stop at? All right, for time's sake, let's keep on pushing. Go to, uh, drop, down a, drop down to 43. Jeez, I got to get through this. I got to get through this. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to get through this. 
when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. So now we're talking about unclean spirit. Everybody had a spirit once upon a time. If you say you didn't, you got a lying spirit already need to be delivered. Amen. Every last one of us had an a clean, unclean spirit, whether I'm talking about sexuality, I'm talking about anger, I can talk about lust, I can talk about, all, but you had some type of spirit. My sister can validate when I was young, they said I had a fighting spirit. I always find myself in what fights. It's like people uh, wanted to fight me or try me when I was small. For some odd reason, I just had, I learned how to use these, these two double, double fives, okay? I'm going to stop there. Yes, so don't go into that, okay? <laughs> see, see, the spirit will jump back on you. See, you, you talk about it too much, it'll jump back on you. But I had the spirit of fight in me, amen? And people knew me when I was young. That's all they knew me about. That dude, that dude went up. That dude, that dude can throw them hands. And they knew me like that. So I carried myself in a certain way. Oh, I wish you would. Trying to come up and, because I'm, I'm ready for all that smoke. I'm ready for the drama. Amen. So I got, I was like that. To the, I, 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 I gained a reputation. Amen. I gained a reputation for what I used to do in that area as well. So that's fighting and anger spirits as we've seen with David. David had a what? Fighting spirit. David killed 10,000. Killed 1,000. Remember we talked about that in Samuel. See, spirits carry with people. David learned how to fight at a young age as well when he was tending his father's what sheep. When, it, when he fought who Goliath, David was a young teenager fighting a giant. He says, I'm skilled in with these, <laughs> these rocks. I ain't skilled with no sword. I ain't skilled. David was so skilled with the rocks that the Lord allowed the anointing to get in the rocks. And, and, and God allowed the rocks to hit, hit Goliath like a, a bullet would hit a person and knock him out. Because you think a little 16 year old got the strength? No, the Holy Ghost got in that. And, that. and the Holy Spirit gave that rock powerful force and knocked Goliath out. And David talked. What, what did David tell the giant? He says, who are you to defile the most high God? He said, I ain't afraid of you. He says, if God delivered the hand of the bear in my hand, God delivered the hand of the lion in my hand, so shall God deliver you into my hand. And he says, since you threaten me with your sword, I'm going to use your own sword to cut your head off. By your words. What if he came and said, oh, Mr. John, you're too big. I'm like a grasshopper. You're going to kill me. Then we'd have been reading a totally different story about David. <laughs> David did. <laughs> he, he didn't fulfill his purpose. He didn't get to write none of the Psalms. Somebody else named Henry done wrote Psalms. <laughs> okay, keep going. I'm sorry. He says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, but when an unclean spirit goes out of it, man, it roams through what? Dry places. A ride places in search of what? Rest. So, stop, stop right there. Search of what? Rest. A spirit got to have what? Rest. The rest is in your, somebody's what? Body. So when you say, man, she got a nasty spirit, just nasty attitude. That's a spirit in there. You got a negative spirit. That's a spirit in there. You got to agitate. Always agitate. That's a spirit in there. You got to always point fingers at people. That's a spirit in there. And see, a lot of times we can't see the spirit, but other people see the spirit. You usually can't see the spirit in you because it's in you, but other people see the spirit. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, help us. You're going to get some revelation. So he says, watch this. He says, he says, uh, seek and rest finds none. But my, he says, they roam places, search for rest, but does not find any. So they need a home to rest. Just like we all got to rest. We can't stay up 24-7 unless you got, your eyes is burning. I did it one time. 
My eyes was burning like somebody done spit fire a barbecue a sauce, a hot sauce in my eyes. Because I needed to go and let rest. I did stay. I, I, I was up from <laughs> morning to then go to bed at 7, 8, and the next morning. I was up all night. Okay? So, so my eyes was burning. I, I, I needed rest. You know, I need to rest to recoup and come back out at 1, 2 in the afternoon to do the same thing. See, the spirits had me just going, going, going. Just like God, a lot of people just going. So, so watch this, people. Verse 44, he says, then he said, I will return to who? Who is his house? Your body, where it used to come from. Spirits said they going to come back. They telling this. They said, I'm coming back to my house. That used to be my house. That ain't your house no more. I took control. I put you in bondage. That's my house. It's no longer you. I control you. That's what they were saying. And that's why many people in church right now, and we, we even know people got religious spirits. They're just religious. They're very religious. Just religious. Just like the Pharisees. Just like the Sadducees. Just like the scribes. A religious spirit. That's all they got. Watch this, people of God. He says, he said, then I would say I return to my house from which I come. He said, then I say I will go back to my house from when which I came out. And when it arrives, when I arrived, it finds the place unoccupied. Uh oh, wait a minute. Hold up. It finds your house unoccupied. No, why? How did it get unoccupied? Does anybody know how is it? How did your house get unoccupied? Does anybody know how did the house get un unoccupied? How? Go ahead, Mr. Merlin. Not reading, not spraying. Not making a habitation. And, no, and let me give you some else. This is what else I was looking for. Because you're not obedient to the word of God. The Bible says, grieve not the what? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will leave you deuce up out of there because he sees you don't want it. He, he unoccupies you. Why you think David said in Psalms 51, Lord, don't take thy spirit from me. Why did the wine and sing that song, Minister Mel, uphold me with a what? Thy, thy free spirit. Whatever you do, Lord, don't take your. Come on now. You better make me play that song. You, you don't take it. Because if, if the Lord's spirit gets out of her, what's the opposite of joy? Anger? Mad? Why are you walking around here mad? You got a spirit on you. Because you ain't got the spirit of joy. Amen? And I'm, but, ah, let me finish this thing. He says, he said, then I say I will go back to my house from which I came out. And when it, when it arrives... It finds the place occupied, swept, in order, and decorated. Meaning it don't have nothing in it. Look at that, people of God. Your house is supposed to have something in it. My house is supposed to have something in it. And it's supposed to have the Spirit of God and His Word and His truth. But when I don't obey God's Word, each time I don't obey, my heart gets hardened. And the Holy Spirit came to what? Can't convict my heart. And now I'm not sensitive to the what? Holy Spirit any longer. And so the Holy Spirit says, okay, you don't want me right now, so I'm going to go ahead and what? Leave. And that's how people get back to what? They always. They still come to church. Some people do, but still they live a double life. Amen? Amen. So he says, watch this, verse 45. He says, then he goes and take with him seven other spirits, more wicked than him because he said, now nah, we need we need strength to keep to keep this person down. I'm gonna need help, buddies. Did, did y'all get ca cast out to Samantha? I'm gonna need y'all. I got a place we can all rest in. Now Samantha had schizo, bipolar, and everything in her. So we I'm gonna need that little, I'm gonna need you with the spirit of anger and the lust and all that. So I'm gonna need you come with me. Because y'all Samantha got full of the Holy Ghost. Samantha got full of the word. Y'all ain't getting back in there in a while, but we're going to always come and watch Samantha. We'll let one or two of y'all get out of him, and then we, we, we'll go and always, every now and then, come and watch, see what Samantha got still in her. That's how the Lord told me they come back. They always say, let, they keep that person in bondage for a while that that person think that they can't what? Get free. There's no more hope. God must have gave them over. And God didn't give them over as they gave them own self 
over. I hope this is making sense. He says, then he goes, take with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this, what? Wicked generation. People. Now see why God says, yeah, deliverance is easy to get free. But to keep it, maintain it, that's the hardest thing. Because we live in a modern day time in America where most people don't study or read or listen to the word like they should. Most people don't pray or be around other people that are praying and so they can catch on prayer. Most people don't stay connected to the vine. Most people don't. And the reason why they don't, what happens is because, watch this, people of God, they, they, they got spirits on them. But when people got the Holy Spirit on them, guess what happens? The Bible says you get around people got the Holy Spirit. He said you'll be free like they stay free. Amen. You'll be charged up all the time. This, this is, this is a, this, and that's why I said we got to keep ourselves. Either you make the tree good. Or either you can make that tree bad. Amen. He didn't say the devil is making you bad. It's we make it by our decisions and our choices. Amen. And that's why he says this wicked generation, socially being this wicked generation. I have so much more to say about this because the Lord really want me to explain certain things. I know we don't read this scripture before, but the Lord really want me to break this thing down to explain and I know I said I would be done at 1 o'clock, it's 106. And, and, and I'm telling you, when the Spirit of God start coming on you on things, especially in this matter. And I told you when I was listening to that man of God, and he said, no, you are always fight for your, de keep your deliverance until you leave up out of here. And I, I totally agree. I still fight myself. You don't think I got eyes and still see? Yeah, I do. You don't think the enemy put things in my mind? He do. But guess what I do? I cast them down. I see just like you see. I hear like you hear. I have to cast them down. You don't think people at my job trying to get me, tempt me? Hey, come out with me. Go to the bar with me. Who's at the bar? Women. Why do women go to happy hour? Get the free. Oh, 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 I'm glad you said that. Free drinks. What? But what else comes with the free drinks? No. Uh -uh. What else? Free drinks. Spirits. To get a spirit put in them. If a spirit get put in them, it a law. They what? They stand as what they would normally do, and it's easily take what. Why you think they be like, hey, come, just come to the bar? Then the, the enemy, I got it already set up. Oh, how you doing? What you doing? I'm just drinking a Sprite. You don't want no drink? Nah, I'm good. What? They says you need a drink to relax you. To relieve the stress. No, I don't. I need the Holy Ghost. Just to keep my mind focused. Y'all don't realize. The enemy gets us drunk of the things of this world. And we don't realize that the game has been played. And if I'd have went with them, you'd never know what would have happened. But now I'm too, I'm too wise and strong enough, and I ain't falling for that stuff no more. I did it, I did it once before. I, I learned from it. And I told them guys, I said, I'll never get in a car with you guys again like this. Because the Lord said, learn from it. So when people say, get in my car, ride with me. No, I'm going to ride my own car so I can leave any time I want to. You ain't going to keep me held hostage in a den of devils and spirits that I used to deal with and struggle with and I thought I was free from and now having a hard time getting my mind back right with the Lord. Because that's where the battle is at, guys, is in what? The mind. That's why I preach that message on Facebook. The heart. <laughs> the heart. Remember that movie Heartbreak Kid? He said the heart wants what it wants. Yeah, when you got a spirit in there, the wrong spirit, it just wants what it wants. And it wants to be pleased. That's all your flesh and my flesh wants to do is to be pleased. And if you can't please it, I'll find another spirit 
that they have that please it. And that's what the enemy said. Oh, you don't have to take that from her or him. It's other people going to please you better. And you said, really? And then there it go. You start thinking about it, and then you, boom, you out there. Amen? And you back in bondage. You got a form of godliness, but you don't have the power of God to change you. You got the formality right, but it ain't the formality. It's the walking right. It's the acting right. I tell you, deliverance, deliverance is easy, but you got to fight to keep it. You got to fight to keep it. Because if you don't fight to keep it, you're only deceiving yourself. And that's why Jesus said on that day, many go say, Lord, do we not do this in your name? He said, depart from me. You wicked servants or you, uh, 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 he said, because I, he said, you workers of lawlessness. You mean you breaking all the laws. You transgress against the word and transgress. Why do you think he's saying that to church folk? Because they got spirits in them. I know church folks to this day. Ain't no wrong with going out clubbing. Ain't no wrong with going to Beyonce club concerts. Ain't nothing going out to happy hour. I'm like, What? And they, and they get around all these, and they get a group of people to agree with like them. And they say, oh, you just try to be too holy to now, a holy roller. And make you feel, to, so you lower your standards, and then you allow that spirit to enter into you. And now you can, you're, in the, you're, in the, you're in the corner club. You're in a, what the Bible calls in Romans 8, a corner club. And it's got you. Amen. Let's give God a big hand praise. I'm going to stop. I can say more than this, but I'm going to stop. Amen. Amen.